she's going to be all right. <laughs> sure she is. I mean, maybe she has to be, because the idea of her spending the rest of her life not being able to see... Now, but... nobody said anything like that. It's just going to take time. Oh, I stopped by and saw Patrick for a while, and we discussed Dieter coming home here. And he was pleased and a bit relieved. Oh, really? Yeah, I still think it's the best idea for her. Maeve, I still want to thank you so much. Oh, Bob, thanks. It's not necessary. You know, as far back as I can remember, the Ryans have been bailing people out with me and Delia at the top of the list. Bob, you always seem to concentrate and pay attention to what we've done for you. Do you ever think about all the things you've done for us time uh, and time again? No comparison. Well, comparisons are odious, says the fella. What's important now is that Dee Dee's going to be here with us, which is better for her and better for Patrick. Yeah, true enough. I think if she's around here, she has the family security. She'll get her sight back in no time. Oh, we're praying for that. Oh, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. How Dave. are you? Fine, thank you. Do you know Bob Reed? Uh, no, but I know of him. Please, don't get up. How do you do? I'm Ray Woodard. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Woodard. Uh, the name is Ray. Oh, okay, Ray. I'm Bob. I can't believe you two have met. Well, I think we just missed each other. Well, I'm very sorry about your husband, uh, Ray. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I've been wanting to meet you for some time. As I understand it, not only are you a friend of Frank's and the Ryans, you are the one indispensable element in his political success. Well, I think we make a pretty good team. Judging from his last plurality, I'd say you make a hell of a team. Yeah. Well, we do our homework. We try not to get into anything unless we think we have a darn good chance of winning. And, well, we try not to make too many enemies along the way. Simple. And quite profound. Mm -hmm. No wonder Frank thinks so highly of you. Yeah. And I think a lot of him. I think Frank deserves the best. The very best. <laughs> minutes? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I wanted to see you, Jill. I, I'm feeling the need for some direct, honest questions and answers. I'm glad you came here. Did they tell you that? No, 8422. Call now and get four Aqua Globes with gift boxes for $14.99. Call 1 800 290 8422. Call now. you came here did they tell you that i was asking for you yes they did these uh these are the first few minutes that i had that i knew we wouldn't be interrupted how uh, how do you feel scared well, i'm sure you are how are things otherwise well my head doesn't hurt so much anymore i just i just don't understand why i can't see and i hate this I mean, how could this be in my mind when i don't want to be blind I'd say that it's a very complex reaction to things that have happened and that are happening at this moment, Dee. Simply stated, I think you're afraid of some of the truths about yourself and Pat, and your unconscious has translated that into physical blindness. Oh, that sounds crazy. Well, it's, uh, it's a symptom of uh, emotional stress, but it's not permanent. You haven't told Pat yet, have you? About the miscarriage? No, I haven't. Look, Roger, it, it's not like I'm, I'm blaming you for this or anything, but I, I think that is the reason why I went blind. It was because of you. I was scared that you were going to tell him. Well, obviously, that is a big part of it, yes, dear. Roger, look, you have to promise me. 
You're not going to tell him, okay? Because if he finds out that I had that, that miscarriage before we got married, I think you know what's going to happen. He's going to leave me and he's going to go straight to faith. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to stand straight again. What time is it? 8 a.m. Oh. Is it really? Yep. He slept all night on that thing. <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. How's your patient? Much better this morning. No meningitis. Thank God. What's he got anyway? Well, it appears to be a very nasty flu. Poor kid was sick enough last night to be admitted anyway. He's going to be all right? Yes, he will. I bet his parents are relieved. Oh, they certainly are. In fact, his mother's asleep with him in the room now. How about you? Well, I got a nap around 6 o'clock. I'm feeling fine, all things considered. And now you're on your 32-hour shift? Ah, uh, yeah, but I can get a nap later on this afternoon. Tom, mm -hmm. I am sorry that our evening was cut short last night. It was splendid, wasn't it? Uh-huh. I've been meaning to ask you, where did you learn how to waltz? In my prior incarnation. <laughs> in Ireland? In the 19th century when I was a lieutenant in the 4th Fusiliers. Mm. You remember everything, don't you? Where did you learn to waltz? At Miss Bagg's dancing class, of course. <laughs> I can do all sorts of obsolete things. Tango, rumba, foxtrot. Will you teach me to tango sometime? With pleasure. And maybe we can resume our evening where we left off. Yes. When? Well, um, let me see. I'm off duty tomorrow afternoon. And because it's my nephew's birthday, I'm to have cake and champagne with Edmund, Roger, and Jill. But we should be finished around 6 o'clock. Could we have dinner after that? Oh, that would be perfect. Is that fine orchestra you keep in your parlor up to a tango or two? Oh, my orchestra delights in tangos. May I bring something to dinner? Nope. Homemade chicken pies in the freezer. Another bottle of La Pirelle? Two bottles of La Pirelle. Better and better. Um... I brought you some coffee on the table there. Oh, Saint Faith. No, no. Regretfully, I have to go back to work. I think I just have about enough time to go home and shave and shower and change my clothes before I tackle the day. Good. Good morning. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't want to let you go. Oh. I suppose we could make my rounds like this. The kids would love it. <laughs> I don't think your department head would. Oh, no. Poor Dr. Franco. I guess I've caused her enough grief lately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really got to get out of here, Tom. Oh, okay. Bye. Faith, um, goodbye. Goodbye. It's lovely being happy, isn't it? Roger, I'm miserable and I'm scared. Now, how can I feel better when I feel like this? Delia, I wish I could make you understand that it's you that's making yourself sick. No. Yes, with the lies and manipulation, by hanging on to Pat, by your crazy obsession with the Ryan. I want Pat. And I want to stay married to Pat. Now, you have to promise me that you're not going to tell him about the miscarriage, Roger. Please. I'm not going to discuss it, Delia. Not with you, Pat, or anyone. Not until you're well. Roger, you have to promise me you will never tell him. Please. I can't do that, Delia. Roger. Oh, good morning, Dr. Ryan. Hi, Roger. Hi, Dee. Ah, they tell me you're feeling better today. I still can't see. Well, that's going to go away. It's going to be all right. I've got some news for you. Bad news. Good news. I think you're going to like it a lot. Well, if I, I don't like it, uh, please, please don't tell me. 
Mother and Da want us to come stay with them for a while until you're feeling better. Really? Yep. When? As soon as you're released. Um, tomorrow? Tomorrow sounds about right. Y you sure it's, it's all right with them? Uh, they're not mad at me. Uh, no. Then I can be part of the family again. I can be your wife. And I can be a Ryan. I just want to know that, that you'll always love me. Because then I can be happy and I know I can be well. On the Sunday night... Sorry if I look startled when you first came in. It's just that I really haven't gotten accustomed to the idea of your being a regular visitor in this house again. Yeah. I suppose I should have called. <clears throat> Do you mind my being here? Uh, no. Well, ever since seeing the baby last night and the run-in with Seneca, I haven't done much else but think about it all. Well, I'm afraid no matter what happens, it's going to take a great deal of thought. I mean, there aren't any easier or quick answers to the situation. No. What I've been trying to do, Jill, is get past a whole mass of angry reactions and defensive reactions to what I really feel. And do you think you've done that? Yeah. At least I think I've made a start. Well, I... <laughs> I'd be interested to hear what you have to say. Well, to begin with, I've become aware of a strong response to the idea of Edmund as my son. It took a while to register emotionally. Well, I mean, you didn't have the normal nine months to prepare yourself. No. And apparently they aren't entirely necessary. Because I'm beginning to experience some very good feelings about Edmund. And about you. And I want to hold on to them. <laughs> well, that makes me feel very relieved. No, no, maybe happy is a better word. Because, Frank, I didn't have any idea how you were reacting to any of this. Well, I'm sorry if I seemed overcautious. No, actually, you took the news better than I thought you would. I mean, in my worst fantasies about how you might behave. I was afraid I had disappointed you. No, look, this is a situation that needs serious thought. I would have been disappointed in you if you hadn't taken that time. Well, we've both been cautious then. Yeah. Because, I suppose, we've both been so aware of how things might have been if we had known about Edmund from the beginning. Well, I like to think that we... we would have made other choices. But we didn't know. And we did make other choices. You've loved Seneca. In a manner of speaking, you've been living with him with... more or less for almost a year. Frank, I'm... What I'm saying is that what hasn't existed between you and Seneca hasn't just been a brief encounter. No, and I'm not going to pretend that it has. But at the same time, you've been expressing a great deal of disapproval of me and the way I've been conducting my life these last few months. Yeah, that's true. And I have to tell you, Jill, that I have been pretty bothered. I've been bothered a lot by some of the disagreements we've had, especially over the strike. <sighs> Look, I've been bothered by them, too. Well... What I wanted to say, and this is really important, I don't feel that I have changed. And I don't feel that anything that I've done has violated in any way the moral standards I've always followed. Frank, look, let's not get into an argument about this. I mean, in the old days, we had lots of fights. I mean, violent fights where both of us were totally convinced that the other person was wrong. But not like the ones we had during the strike. Over the Woodards. Yeah. Look, you came here to tell me that your feelings about Edmund have changed. Now, I'm glad. I am so glad. And maybe I did overreact during the negotiating strikes. I don't think that I did. But if I did, if I did, I apologize. I I'm sorry. All right. I accept that. With thanks. Because it has been bothering me. I know. I think a lot of things have happened that have bothered both of us. I'll forget about it if you will. Okay. It's a deal. Agreed. 
I know there's no point in wishing things could be as they were before Seneca entered our lives, but at least we should be able to reestablish some sort of, of working relationship between us. That would certainly be fine with me. And as far as Edmund is concerned, I'd like to see as much of him as possible. Frank, I want you to see him. I, I want him to see you. You don't know how happy that makes me feel. I'm glad. <laughs> because I tell you something, I, I, I couldn't stand all that glaring at each other during the negotiating strikes. We've been through too much together to wind up angry and bitter at each other. Oh, I haven't liked it much either. I thank you for bridging the gap. Thank Edmund. It was his doing. Okay. <laughs> I will. Frank. <sighs> Look, uh, maybe you'd like to thank Edmund in person. Um, if you come by tomorrow, late after work, it's, uh, it's his birthday, and uh, we're gonna have the whole works, you know, funny hats and balloons and uh, cake with candles and champagne for the grown-ups. So, uh, will you come? I wouldn't miss it for the world. I'm glad. I, I really look forward to seeing you. Me too. And thanks for doing this. Thanks for listening, Jill. And the invitation. Exactly two minutes, but I wanted to drop off this ointment for Edmund's rash. Oh, you are such a nice person. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Miriam has him out at the store. She likes to get to uh, the lines before they get too long. Well, Miriam was always the most uh, <laughs> rational person we knew. <laughs> you are coming to the birthday party tomorrow? Are you kidding? <laughs> Thanks coming, too. Oh, Jill! I'm so pleased. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> He, um, he was just here a little while ago, and he was making such an effort. You know, I think you were right after all. I mean, Frank and I, we may have our differences, but I really don't think he's, he's changed that much after all. I told you. Did you tell him? No, and in a rather roundabout fashion. But we did make up our differences about the strike. Oh, good. You know, I'm probably an incurable romantic, and I know you don't agree with me, but I'm looking forward to this birthday party tomorrow more than anything I've looked forward to in the longest time. No, no, I'm looking forward to it, too. Tomorrow, right after work. I agree with you, Bob. I'm sure Maeve does, too. I think Frank deserves the best, the very best. What's more, I think he's going to get it. Ray, are you talking about the Senate? I am talking about an unlimited future. Look, you people, you friends, family, maybe you don't see him as objectively as an outsider can. Oh, I'm sure we can, though we have developed generally a favorable impression. I'm sure you have. But the fact is what you've given him, the love, the faith in him, the confidence in him, that's the single most important reason why he has such a strong belief in himself. Oh, yes, Francis is sure of himself. But that self-confidence is what makes him so very attractive. He is such an appealing candidate. So you think he can go all the way? Yes, I do. I see. And you don't think he's too young to run for the Senate? We are going to turn his youth into an asset. Young and vital versus old and cynical. Okay, now Riverside is his only base. The rest of New York doesn't even know who he is. I have two television stations and two newspapers in this state alone. Well, that ought to help a little bit. But what is more important, I have a ready-made organization for him. For the past two years, I have been building a team throughout this entire state to support Bill when he ran for the Senate. I have people in 26 cities and, and towns in this state ready to do whatever I ask them So to. you're saying you can take the people who are committed to your husband, swing them over, make them work for Frank? That's exactly what I'm saying. Do you have any idea what kind of help that would provide? 
Oh, one hell of a lot. That's what I think. Oh, you really got this worked out, don't you? Of course I have. Look, has, uh, has Frank told you about his uh, personal difficulties? You mean Miss Coleridge and the baby? Yeah. He has, yes, and my point of view on that is very simple. Well, I, for one, would be interested in hearing your viewpoint. Okay. Speaking strictly professionally, the best candidate for me is Frank Ryan Bachelor, unattached with Miss Coleridge marriage to somebody else. Second choice, Frank Ryan married to Miss Coleridge, raising their children together. What concerns me is Frank as a bachelor candidate with Jill living nearby as the mother of his illegitimate child. No, that wouldn't be so good. Well, the fact that Frank is Edmund's father is not a matter of public knowledge. I mean, there's no gossip about it. We could certainly keep that within the family. Wish I could agree with you. Unfortunately, a great deal of attention is paid to a candidate's personal life during a campaign, and so many people know about this baby. I would just be afraid of a leak, and more important, I would be afraid that that would destroy his chances. Destroy? Yeah. Yeah, I have to agree. However, that's looking on the negative side, and I like to deal with positives. I'm sure Frank's going to resolve the problem, and what I want to do right now is get moving. So how? Well, the first thing I'd like to do is take Frank and you, if you can find the time, down to Washington for dinner and or drinks one night this week. Um, the National Committee is meeting. It would be a good time for Frank to meet some of the members. Well, that'd be great. You really think you can swing that? I think so. I hope so. But let's not tell Frank about it until I'm absolutely sure. Let's not get his hopes up. I'll try for tonight or tomorrow. You won't forget. Forget a chance to see you and Frank and Edmund together in the same room at the same time, no. <laughs> Five o'clock. I really am sort of hopeful. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Spend breakfast in bed with SoapNet. Sleep in, curl up, and check out with back-to-back -back episodes of One Tree Hill and Beverly Hills 90210. Breakfast in bed, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday on SoapNet.